Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Thanks for watching the video today. So I bought this um, last week. This is a Dynaglo RMC 95C2 kerosene heater. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of the BTUs right now. I'll try to have that uh, up before the video's out. Um, so I got this for 1951. Uh, checked there is no kerosene in here there hasn't been any kerosene probably for a long time because there are signs of rust um, in the tank and really everywhere so in the store what I noticed was the knob wick knob was not moving either way and uh, it was cracked not all the way broke through but you know someone had definitely uh, tried to turn it so hard that it actually broke um, now I have I have looked at it and I've got some video of what it looks like I'll try to show that um, really what had happened is is the wick had uh, rusted to or stuck to the rusted tank and so I had to just uh, tear all that out uh, really pretty bad shape So here we are today after ordering the wick. I've got the new wick here. I'm going to uh, take it back apart uh, It still needs to be cleaned really well, but uh, we're going to put the new wick on today or try to uh, So to get to the wick we need to take this top Cabinet part off now. There are two big screws here you can see I've already got them loosened. Uh, so I just put everything kind of back together because I knew I was going to be getting the wick. So a lot of stuff is going to be loose. Once we get these two out, we should be able to just lift from the handle. Perfect. So I did blow a lot of this off. It was really filthy before. Okay, so this right here, I guess it's like a windshield maybe. Um, there was a set screw I still have in my hand here. And uh, actually it's down, it's supposed to be down a little bit farther, but uh, it should just come off. There we go. Let's set that aside with the little set screw. Probably don't even need that set screw. Okay, so here is the igniter assembly. We don't really need to mess with that. To get to the wick, what we need to do is to go ahead and take this knob off so we can get this part off. Um, yeah, make sure that the cap on the tank is off. Just lift this off. Okay, so next got some wing nuts here for them go ahead and take those off so yeah there is no wick wick as you see there are still remnants on the ground over here but uh, not in here right now so the wing nuts should be able to just lift it up. That I've still got to clean up before putting any kerosene in. So it was in pretty bad shape. Now there is a sleeve that I left out right here. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look. Here's a uh, rubber gasket is still very good. You can go ahead and put that back on the tank.
Okay, we'll put that on later. See all the rust? Not good at all. But inside here, it's still good. So, uh, that's where we're at right now. All right, so let me get that sleeve for the wick. Here's the wick sleeve. Now there's barbs in here, holes that will need to line up with the new wick. It's an arrow that says up, so this is the top. Here's our new wick I just got. 32, 225. Here's a look at it. Nice looking wick. And here's some bullet points to let you know if you need to change your wick. Uh, another one would be if your wig knob is not moving like mine be a good idea to take a look at the wick and probably replace it all right so the sleeve or wick holder is in the up position you can tell that by looking at the arrow it says up there so this is the top and here's the top of our wick our wick has three pins in it so what we're going to do is just slide the wick inside and line up those pins with the holes in the wick holder I'm wearing gloves here because there's barbs inside this wick holder and they're very sharp very pointy they can hurt you, so uh, don't want that to happen. Okay, there's one pin lined up. Kind of got two. Okay, there's the third one going back to the first one again. So that's the idea. Just get them all lined up. Once you get them in position, you need to make sure that uh, the wick is flush and that's where those little barbs will come in. I'll have to make sure that the fabric of the wick is. is engaged with those little barbs okay looking good here So we got the wick in the wick holder. Now we want to put it back in here. Uh, we are upside down. So we're going to uh, take this part of it off right here. This should separate. Um, it may turn. Mine's rusted. So I'm going to have to do some prying. A couple places here. There we go. All right. See these slots here, long groove there, there's three of them. I'm going to take the top of the wick and drop it through and line up our pins in those slots. And from the outside you can see the slots as well on the pin here. So I'm going to go ahead and push my pin. in try to get it started and so I got that one in let's go to this one 
Okay. All right, so. I'm all in place. pins are lined up at the top I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of tuck this away right now I'm going to take this we took off uh, which is actually the bottom I guess it's the top right now put that in position and just pull the wick through where this is going to be laying in the kerosene on the bottom of the tank um, again yours may twist on probably going to have to tap mine down but uh i'll use my other hand and maybe i can turn it so uh that's what we're going to do and then i'll get right back all right so i got it back on flush all the way around uh, now I'm gonna turn it upright we're gonna set it on here make sure that our rubber gasket is in place it is uh, to line this up see where the knob should be at it's gonna line up with the, uh, the igniter knob and just kind of I'm gonna have to use my other hand for this just to uh, put the wick over the cylinder there Putting wing nuts back in place. Pretty optimistic. I have I've tried it out and think we're going to be able to use it after all. wick is rising and that's all we need to do doesn't rise that high but uh, we only need like three eighths of an inch of a burn and that's plenty and go a little higher we got the wick release right here Yeah, pretty happy about that. And I think once we get uh, kerosene in here, it'll make it a little bit easier as well. Uh, because right now it's, it's riding up on the dry uh, cylinder. So, uh, yeah, let's take the knob off and put that piece on here. piece now and finally let's put on the cabinet protective grill Two holes on the side need to be lined up for the uh, for the bolts. 
and that's all. Make sure the opening here on the grill is so that you can open up and make adjustments if you need to. That's going to be it for the uh, Dynaglo 95, what is it, RMC 95C2. Uh, definitely want to try this out, even though it's not that cold right now. It's, um, it's late September. But uh, I want to try it out with all the work we've put into this and see if it's going to light. Definitely want to use this this uh, winter. So uh, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching so far. Um, I'm going to get some kerosene, put it in. Maybe tomorrow we'll try to light it for the first time.